feel that we are setting up an initial ministerial task force. However, we equally expect the government of Eritrea and the Tigray People's Liberation Front to accept and recognize the findings of the joint investigation, as well as to adhere to the outlined recommendations. We continue to call for an immediate ceasefire and also call on all parties to commit immediately to unimpeded humanitarian action. International humanitarian law must be respected. Humanitarian aid has to go get to the people immediately. immediately. Humanitarian staff have to be able to work in a safe environment. We welcome the ongoing mediation by the African Union, headed by the African Union's High Representative for the Horn of Africa, Otanya, and pledge our unwavering support to his efforts. A strong African initiative is essential to bring about a solution of this conflict and lasting peace for the people of Ethiopia. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now have a video statement from the distinguished representative of the Russian Federation. President, Russia confirms its commitment to the sovereignty, independence and territorial integrity of Ethiopia. The situation in the country remains complex. A political settlement without a ceasefire is in principle impossible. However, Russia consistently opposes politicization of the Ethiopian question in the Human Rights Council. The ongoing emphasis on this topic in the Council is counterproductive. In reality, it does not facilitate a resolution of the political and military crisis in the country. We believe that the creation in the Human Rights Council of an additional fact-finding mechanism on Ethiopia is superfluous. The government of Ethiopia is successfully cooperating with international human rights mechanisms. This can be seen from the professional impartial work of the National Human Rights Commission, whose activities are fully in keeping with the Paris principles and have a status. We believe in the principle African problems need African solutions. It, thus, we support the mediation efforts of the African Union. We strongly consistently reject any imposition of unilateral approaches. In the Ethiopian case, we note an obviously politically motivated decision by certain states. We believe that the ongoing practice of creation by the Council of Monitoring Mechanisms without the agreement of the concerned countries is doomed to fail. Any experts appointed would not be able to work on the ground. Their reports would consist of one-sided information obtained from dubious sources or from the internet. Moreover, the financial resources allocated to the activities of such specialists would mostly be used to pay their salaries. We are convinced that in the context of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, the international community could devote its already limited resources to more important matters. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now hear from the distinguished representative of Indonesia on Zoom. Um, thank you. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Indonesia is closely following the evolving situation in Ethiopia. We hope that the present conflict in Ethiopia can be resolved peacefully through an inclusive national dialogue. Through this special session, Indonesia joined the call for all parties to exercise utmost restraint and prevent the escalation of further violence and hostility. The safety, well-being, and security of all people, regardless of their ethnicity or belief, must always be assured. At the same time, respect for Ethiopia's sovereignty, unity, political independence, and territorial integrity must be safeguarded. Indonesia welcomes the ongoing effort by the Ethiopian government in pursuing accountability for all parties involved in the violation of human rights. Indonesia also notes the effort to implement the recommendation made by the OHCHR and the IHRC joint investigation team, particularly the establishment of the high-level interministerial task force. We are all aware to make progress, the international community must 
first and foremost, support national and regional effort and initiative to resolve the conflict in Ethiopia peacefully. Indonesia hopes today's special session can serve to that effect. Resolution of the Human Rights Council relating to the situation in Ethiopia must primarily be aimed at strengthening domestic capacities and to galvanize support from international community to the effort of the existing mechanism that ensure accountability and provide redress for the victims as well as respect for human rights of all parties with a clear set of timeline and objective. Our outcome must contribute to the tangible progress on the ground and do not move us away from a unified stance of the Council and further distract us from the ongoing processes and regional initiative. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now hear from the distinguished representative of Brazil on Zoom. We appear not to be able to hear you. Are you unmuted? We still can't hear you. We'll try again. We'll move to the next speaker and see if the issue can be resolved. We'll now hear from the distinguished representative of India via a video statement. I thank you, Madam President. The conflict in northern parts of Ethiopia had seen escalation in recent weeks, and the fighting has intensified and the humanitarian situation has worsened adversely affecting millions, particularly women, children, and elderly. It is concerning to note that the humanitarian efforts led by the UN has been stalled in the recent weeks. It is important that humanitarian assistance is resumed at the earliest available opportunity. We have noted the report of the Joint Investigation Team of the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission and the Office of High Commissioner for Human Rights. We also note and welcome the recognition and acceptance of the report by the Ethiopian government as an important document that could complement ongoing efforts by the Ethiopian government to address the allegations of human rights violations and abuses. India has consistently underscored the importance of mutual trust, engagement, dialogue, and reconciliation to address all issues related to the ongoing conflict. We therefore call upon all stakeholders to seize the opportunity provided by the mediation efforts of the African Union purposefully. We urge all sites to exercise restraint and work together to build trust and confidence that could pave way for dialogue. The political and economic stability of Ethiopia is paramount, not just for the Horn of Africa, but the entire African continent. It is in our interest that the current politico-military situation is resolved within the constitutional framework of Ethiopia. We encourage African solutions to African problems. In conclusion, India reiterates its strong commitment to the unity sovereignty, independence, and territorial integrity of Ethiopia. India also supports various steps taken by the government of Ethiopia to resolve the conflict and to address the humanitarian and human rights situation. I thank you, Madam President. I thank the distinguished representative of India. And now we'll hear from the distinguished represent representative of Argentina by a video statement. Madam President, we are concerned by the report on the, investiga the joint investigation report of the Ethiopian Commission of Human Rights and the Office of the High Commissioner published last November, which reached the conclusion that there are reasons to believe 
that all parties of the conflict in Tigray have perpetrated to varying degrees violations of international human rights law, international humanitarian law, and the rules that protect refugees, among them some which can be considered crimes of war and crimes against humanity. We are also concerned to see that several special procedures of the United Nations have reported at the beginning of December the generalized situation of sexual and gender violence against women and girls in some part of the country. In that regard, the Republic of Argentina wishes to express its deep concern over the recent escalation and hostilities in the north of Ethiopia and for the impact that it has in the humanitarian and human rights situation of the civilian population, as well as on the country's stability and the region of the Horn of Africa. We support mediation efforts underway from the African Union to find a political and not a military solution to the crisis, and we urge all parties to the conflict to cease hostilities and to establish a comprehensive and inclusive dialogue with the aim to achieving sustainable peace, while we reiterate our strongest commitment to the sovereignty and political independence, the territorial integrity, and the unity of Ethiopia. In that regard, we welcome the decision of the government of Ethiopia to establish an interministerial working group to oversee the reparation and accountability measures to respond to the human rights violations, and we encourage this working group to quickly fulfill its mandate. Furthermore, we urge all parties to the conflict to fully respect international human rights law, international humanitarian law, and international refugees law. To guarantee unrestricted access to humanitarian aid, as well as to constructively cooperate with the mechanisms for protection included in this council. Bearing in mind the role that dialogue and cooperation should play in the prevention of violations of human rights, my country makes itself available once again at the behest of the government of Africa to lend the technical assistance and the collaboration that they require. Lastly, we would like to underscore the work of this council in the prevention of violations of human rights and to promptly address emergency situations in keeping with the mandate given by Resolution 60-251 of the GA. Thank you. I thank the Distinguished Ambassador of Argentina. We'll now hear from the Distinguished Representative of Mexico via video statement. Thank you, President of Mexico. Welcome to the holding of this session and the updated information. We wish to express concern at the serious human rights situation affecting Ethiopian civilians for over a year now. It is crucial that the abuses and violations of human rights be investigated and punished, especially the cases of sexual violence and gender-based violence. Mexico recognizes the Ethiopian government's efforts, including the creation of an interministerial working group at a high level on accountability and reparation for viol violations committed in the context of the Tigray conflict. To support these efforts, the creation of an expert commission on human rights has the goal of creating the conditions to guarantee respect for human rights. Mexico calls on all parties to the conflict to seek a peaceful solution to their differences through dialogue based on the mediation efforts by the African Union and to guarantee full respect for international law, particularly international human rights law and international refugee law. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Mexico. We will now hear from the distinguished representative of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland on Zoom. Madam Vice President, we are here today to stand with the people of Ethiopia who have faced more than a year of conflict and who have witnessed atrocities on the most extraordinary, horrifying scale. We have heard the message loud and clear from the Joint Investigation Team and directly and eloquently this morning from the Deputy High Commissioner. The human rights situation in Ethiopia is dire. Crimes of the most serious nature, including possible war crimes, have taken place and continue to occur. This Council has received credible reports of mass killings, torture and disappearances. We've heard the most horrific accounts of the widespread use of rape and sexual and gender-based violence as a weapon of war. 
Most recently, we have seen the mass detention of people based on their ethnic origin, alongside inflammatory and hateful rhetoric from public figures. No one, I repeat, no one, can seriously argue that this situation does not deserve the urgent attention of this council. Madam President, the United Kingdom is fully committed to supporting the peace process and African Union High Representative Ada Sanjo's efforts for national reconciliation. And we are not here this morning to point fingers at any one side of this conflict. But a sustainable peace requires respect for human rights. Yet all parties to the conflict have reportedly committed violations or abuses. There are clearly deep divisions in Ethiopian society and an alarming level of mistrust between communities, which creates a high risk of further deterioration. And that, Madam Vice President, is why it is so important to create an independent and impartial human rights mechanism and to take the necessary steps to prevent more atrocities. We must guarantee that all violations and abuses are reported that we can and will combat impunity, and that we provide all victims and survivors the support they need and the justice that they deserve. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Thank you very much, Ambassador. We will now hear from the distinguished representative of the Czech Republic via a video statement. Madam President. The Czech Republic aligns itself with a commitment to stability, unity, and territorial integrity of Ethiopia. As a country with deep historical ties to Ethiopia, long-term development cooperation, and active presence in the country, we remain ready to work towards peace and respect for international humanitarian and human rights law. We have sought to address the human rights and humanitarian situation in Ethiopia at the 46th, 47th, as well as 48th session of the Council. In the meantime, the situation has continued to worsen. Hostilities in Agrai have expanded to the Amhara region. Three million people fled their homes. More than five million people are in need of urgent humanitarian assistance, impacting also regions of Afar and Amhara. Last month, we were informed about the conclusions of the joint investigation undertaken by the OHCHR and the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission. The Czech Republic was deeply concerned about the alleged serious violations and abuses of international uh, human rights and humanitarian law by all parties to the conflict in Tigray. These included targeted killings of civilians, widespread sexual and gender-based violence, possibly crimes against humanity and war crimes. We commend the work of the OHCHR and EHRC. Concrete steps are now urgently needed. We call on all parties to immediately cease hostilities and other actions that hinder humanitarian access and to engage in political negotiations. All parties to the conflict must fully respect international humanitarian law, including protection of civilians and humanitarian workers. We encourage all parties to implement the recommendation by the joint investigation. We welcome the establishment of the Ethiopian Interministerial Task Force. We encourage the task force to closely cooperate with the international mechanism established by the special session. The Czech Republic strongly supports the mediation efforts led by the High Representative of the African Union, Mr. Obasanjo, an Ethiopian-led inclusive national dialogue within the framework of the Ethiopian Constitution should follow. At the same time, we believe that the Human Rights Council has a complementary role to the national and regional efforts. Therefore, the Czech Republic fully supports the draft resolution on the human rights situation in Ethiopia and calls for its full implementation. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of the Czech Republic for his statement. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I wish to advise that the list of speakers is now closed. We will now continue our discussion with a video statement from the distinguished representative of the Republic of Korea. Thank you, Madam President. The Republic of Korea has been closely monitoring the evolving situation in Ethiopia with grave concern. More than a year into the military confrontation in the country, the recurring cycle of violence has caused thousands of civilian casualties and had a devastating impact on the human rights situation on the ground. 
My delegation is especially concerned of the gravity and magnitude of human rights atrocities against the civilians, such as summary executions, indiscriminate shelling, lootings of civilian properties, and alarming levels of sexual violence against women and girls. The report of the joint investigation by OHCHR and the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission clearly demonstrates that all parties to the conflict have committed violations of international human rights and humanitarian law. We condemn such atrocities and stress that all allegations must be thoroughly investigated. Madam President, expressing our concern over reported significant rise in hate speech, ethnic profiling, and mass detention on the basis of ethnicity, we reiterate our call for the immediate release of those in arbitrary detention, including UN staff members. In addition, the dire humanitarian situation remains a major concern. The fragile security condition left over 9 million people in critical need of food and other humanitarian assistance. Unhindered and safe humanitarian access to all affected areas should be fully guaranteed. Madam President, a genuine solution can only be found with an immediate cessation of hostilities through dialogue between all parties. In this regard, my delegation fully supports the ongoing mediation efforts by the African Union and looks to all parties to engage in inclusive national dialogue so that a political solution to this crisis can be found. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of the Republic of Korea. We'll now hear from the distinguished representative from the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela on Zoom. Thank you, President. Venezuela once more expresses serious concern of the growing selectivity and double standards represented in these calls for special sessions in the Council against countries of the South, which paved the way for instrumentalization of the noble cause of human rights in favor of interests that cannot be named. We condemn the ongoing interference in internal affairs and reiterate our strong opposition to these politicized initiatives, which must be definitively eradicated from the work of this council. This special session against Ethiopia has no purpose, still less if we take into account the full cooperation by that country, which is working closely with the Office of the High Commissioner on the ground. The striving to impose a monitoring mechanism that does not have the support of Ethiopia is doomed to fail. Such a mechanism would be an obstacle to the joint work undertaken and to achieving tangible results, as pointed out by the head of the Human Rights Commission of Ethiopia. President, we regret the conflict that is being experienced in the north of Ethiopia. The government has openly cooperated with the joint investigation and committed to fulfilling the recommendations of the report in order to bring to justice those who have committed human rights violations. We welcome the establishment of a the special prosecution service and the creation of an interministerial working group to carry these out. My country is strongly committed to the supreme values of peace, friendship among nations and solidarity, and will continue to seek a peaceful solution to disputes on the basis of the universal principles of respect for sovereignty and non-interference in the internal affairs of states, as well as the right to self-determination of peoples enshrined in the Charter of the United Nations. Thus, the international community must support all good faith initiatives that seek to achieve stability in Ethiopia, working with the support of that country and in keeping with sovereign decisions by Ethiopia. Thank you, President. I thank the distinguished representative from Venezuela. We'll now um, hear from the distinguished representative of Brazil on Zoom. May I speak? Excellency, we are waiting for the distinguished representative from Brazil. We'll return to you momentarily. Brazil, please proceed. Thank you. Madam Chairman, uh, Brazil is deeply concerned 
about the situation in Ethiopia. The ongoing conflict has further deteriorated the human rights and humanitarian situation on the ground. Brazil calls for all parties to fully respect international human rights and humanitarian law, and to take all necessary measures for the protection of civilians without any discrimination. We are deeply disturbed by reports of widespread abuses and violations, as well as of um, incitement to violence on the basis of ethnicity. All parties must heed the calls to implement an immediate and comprehensive ceasefire and to ensure full and unhindered humanitarian access to all those in need. We strongly support in this regard the efforts of the African Union and the IGAD towards a peaceful, sustainable and inclusive political solution. As the, the African uh, Union High Representative Obasanjo stated, I quote, war represents a fake change, unquote. Brazil trusts that all parties to the conflict can still make politics and diplomacy succeed by restoring dialogue and achieving an Ethiopian-led democratic and inclusive political solution that respects the human rights and promotes sustainable development for all Ethiopians without discrimination. Brazil deems of key importance that this council in considering the situation in Ethiopia act in a way that supports the ongoing efforts to address the crisis currently undertaken by African actors, including the African Union High Representative for the Horn of Africa, the African Commission of Human and People's Rights and the Ethiopian Commission on Human Rights. Thank you very much. Thank you, Excellency. We'll now hear from the distinguished representative of China on Zoom. So you have the floor. Madam Vice President, China is following the development of the situation in Ethiopia. We support Ethiopia's efforts to safeguard national sovereignty and unity. We sincerely hope that all relevant parties in Ethiopia will put the interest of the country and the people first, keep calm and restraint, and avoid further escalation of the situation and resolve differences through political dialogue and create conditions for peaceful reconciliation. The current situation in Ethiopia is the result of political, historical, ethnic, and uh, multiple factors. We can only seek solutions from within. China has always supported solving African issues in African ways. We welcome the political mediation of High Representative Obasanjo. The international community should provide constructive help to Ethiopia. The work of the HRC should follow the principles of impartiality, objectivity, non-politicization, and non-selectivity. The relevant countries ignored Ethiopia's opposition and showed no respect for the mediation efforts of African countries, forced through a special session of the HRC and proposed to establish the country-specific mechanism of Ethiopia. These attempts interfere in Ethiopia's internal affairs undermine its sovereignty and the territorial integrity and further intensifies contradictions and add complicated factors to the situation. This is contrary to the purpose of the HRC. We are seriously concerned about the behavior of relevant countries and urge them to immediately stop their wrong practices. China believes that Ethiopian people have the capacity and the wisdom to overcome current challenges, maintain national unity, and bring the country back to the correct track of peace, stability, development, and revitalization. China is ready to work with the international community in support of the above efforts of the Ethiopian people. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative from China. We'll now have a video statement from the distinguished representative of the Ukraine. Thank you, Madam President. Ukraine expresses deep concern over the current grave human rights situation in Ethiopia. We are alarmed by the high level of violence against civilians, in particular women and girls committed by the Tigrayan Defense Forces and other parties to Ethiopia's conflict in Tigray that is affecting peace process and overall human rights situation in the region. Safety of civilians should be ensured unconditionally. 
Ukraine condemns the widespread sexual and gender-based violence committed against women and girls in Tigray, Amhara and Afar and urges cessation of violence and ensuring justice for victims. We also call on all parties to the conflict to respect international humanitarian, human rights and refugees law, stop targeting civilians, including on the basis of their ethnicity or gender, to treat everyone in custody humanely and prohibit and prevent executions and other abuses. There are a lot of refugees who have fled from the fighting and are living in displacement camps both in and outside of Ethiopia with no access to food, healthcare, water, and even sanitation. They should be provided much needed assistance. In light of the aggravating situation, we believe that the international community has a moral obligation to take action to prevent further escalation and ensure accountability and justice for victims and survivors. We call on all stakeholders cooperate to cooperate with the relevant international mechanisms to ensure comprehensive peace, security and stability in the region and support the country in this effort. I thank you. I thank the distinguished ambassador and we'll now hear from the distinguished representative of Uruguay on Zoom. Thank you very much, President. Uruguay would like to express its serious preoccupation in light of the deterioration situation in Ethiopia and the context of the recent military escalation linked to the conflict in Tigray. We deplore the negative implications of this on human rights, which worsens the humanitarian situation in the state and threatens the stability of the Horn of Africa. We would like to express our concern uh, in light of the content in the report of the Office of the High Commissioner and the National Human Rights Institution of Ethiopia, which concluded that all the parties to the conflict in Tigray have committed violations of international law, law, especially when it comes to human rights, international humanitarian law, and international law on refugees. It also concludes that there are motives to believe that some of these violations could constitute war crimes and crimes against humanity. Therefore, Uruguay supported the convening of this special session to because we understand that the council plays a key role in terms of preventing atrocious crimes and protecting victims in full respect of sovereignty unity and the territorial integrity of ethiopia at the same time uruguay would like to express its gratitude to the Ethiopian government for the establishment of an interministerial working group to oversee the accountability measures for human rights violations that have been recorded and for supporting the implementation of the recommendations stemming from the joint investigation. We encourage the government, given the current situation, to step up its efforts to make progress in this direction. We also commend the mediation carried out by the African Union through its high representative. And we hope to see a swift settlement for this crisis through peaceful means, that is say through a inclusive dialogue that will ensure sustainable peace and the full respect of human rights for the entire population without any discrimination, including grounds of ethnicity, race or religion. We encourage all the parties to the conflict in Tigray to ensure the full respect of international human rights, of international humanitarian law and international refugee law, and to grant access for humanitarian aid and to protect national and international humanitarian personnel. Finally, we would like to call on all parties to cooperate with the Office of the High Commissioner, with this Council and its mechanisms, including for the implementation of its mandate. I must interrupt, you've exhausted your time, and we'll now um, hear from the distinguished representative of Somalia, who will address the Council in person. Thank you. Thank you. Vice President, Somalia is aligned with the African group statement presented on the situation of the human rights in Ethiopia. We congratulate the government of Ethiopia and its people for stepping taken to fall democratically, secure its peace within its border, and advance the 
interest of, the, of its people. Somalia noted with satisfaction and support the positive process and progress of ongoing investigation on a joint investigation team of the Ethiopian Rights Commission. And the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for the Human Rights. The joint investigation team should be interested to conclude the investigation it's made respect and be given the time without due pressure or prior process. Somalia is concerned about the new proposal of setting up another body with the same mandate of a joint investigation team of the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission. This would be counterproductive to the current processes to support victims and services. It's made under the inter-processes to advance the human rights situation in Ethiopia. With that note, my delegation does not support this resolution and the new proposal of the situation in the human rights in Ethiopia. Somalia will fought against and call on other members of the council to do the same. Thank you, Vice President. Thank you. We'll now hear from the distinguished representative of the Philippines on Zoom. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the Philippines' position with regards to unilateral initiatives is well established. We have been a consistent advocate in the Council of genuine cooperative efforts that assist and empower national accountability institutions and mechanisms. As we echo the deep concern of the international community over reports of human rights violations and abuses committed by all parties to conflict in the Tigray region, we also acknowledge the Ethiopian government's cooperation with the joint investigation by the OHCHR and the European NHRI. We further acknowledge the ongoing efforts by its national accountability institutions and the task force to hold perpetrators to account and to address recommendations in the joint report. We understand that various efforts are also being carried out within the framework of the African Union. In this regard, we reiterate our concern on the proliferation of mandates and the externalization of accountability. The informals on the draft resolution proceeded without due regard to the PPI, giving point what many have observed as PPI being an afterthought or fetocompli. We underline our concern that PBIs for this kind of initiative merely provide for UN staff salaries and travel, none for supporting national programs such as those related to victim assistance. This practice requires conscientious examination. We have time and again called for discipline and prudence on the part of pen holders and to ensure that actions are weighed against their ability to assist and not undermine national institutions. I thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. We will now hear from the distinguished representative of Namibia via a video statement. Namibia aligns herself with a statement delivered on behalf of the African group, and we take this opportunity to deliver a few remarks in our national capacity. Madam President, the primary responsibility to promote, protect, and fulfill human rights lies with the state. All international efforts should complement and not substitute the efforts of the state aimed at executing this responsibility. Namibia has in the past placed on record that mechanisms such as the one envisaged by the outcome of this special session should only be deployed where the state concerned is unwilling and unable to address the human rights concerns and to hold perpetrators accountable. In the case of Ethiopia, we have a state that has cooperated with the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights in the joint investigations that were carried out with the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission. The state concerned has also accepted the recommendations of the joint investigations and proceeded to establish national mechanisms to try and address the human rights concerns that emanate from the ongoing conflict. It is our understanding that the Ethiopian government has again invited the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights 
to continue reporting and monitoring beyond the June 2021 period. Given these developments, it is beyond our comprehension why this council is called upon to assume that the Ethiopian government may not be able to address the human rights concerns and to hold perpetrators accountable, notwithstanding the national mechanisms that have been created for this purpose. It is our submission that this council's action should be based on factual conclusions rather than the assumptions that the state concerned may not be able to address the human rights concerns and hold perpetrators accountable. We conclude that the creation of the proposed international investigative mechanism is not compatible with a complementary principle and, and could undermine the efforts of national institutions. Namibia can therefore not support the creation of the envisaged mechanism at this stage. I thank you. I thank the distinguished ambassador of Namibia. We'll now hear from the distinguished representative of Japan by way of a video statement. Thank you, Chair. Japan is concerned about the continuing conflict in Ethiopia and the serious human rights and the humanitarian situation in the country. In order to realize a permanent and peaceful resolution to the conflict, it is important that the international community assist the mediation efforts being made by African Union High Representative of Japan. Japan calls for immediate and effective humanitarian access in the affected areas of Ethiopia. Considering the report by High Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights and the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission, Japan also calls for those responsible for human rights violations to be held accountable. Japan will continue to work to address this humanitarian crisis with the international community. In this regard, we are exploring the possibility of providing additional humanitarian assistance, taking into account the increased number of people in urgent need as a result of the conflict. Japan will also contribute to efforts to achieve long-term peace and stability in Ethiopia. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Japan. We'll now hear from the distinguished representative of France on Zoom. Thank you very much, President. President, High Commissioner, France aligns itself with the statement given by the EU. More than a year on from the start of the conflict in Tigray, the continued deterioration of the security and humanitarian situations, which now affects all of the regions in the north of Ethiopia, poses a threat for the country's stability and the region. Human rights violations and violations of international humanitarian law, some of which could amount to war crimes and crimes against humanity, must be addressed. We call again on all of parties to immediately cease hostilities and to begin negotiations without any preconditions to reach a lasting ceasefire and restore full humanitarian access. France recalls its full support for the efforts led by the High Representative of the African Union for the Horn of Africa to facilitate a political dialogue. President, fact-finding and combating impunity for those who violate human rights and international humanitarian law must be at the heart of our efforts. No peace process can be lasting without justice. That is why the joint report by the High Commissioner for Human Rights and the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission is a first and key step forward here. But this report is not a goal in and of itself. We would like to encourage the parties to the conflict who have not yet done so to accept its conclusions and recommendations like the Ethiopian authorities have done. They have already taken certain commitments. Finally, the joint report is very clear and calls for more in-depth investigations into the alleged violations, especially those recorded after the 28th of June 2021. Madam President, this extraordinary session has been organized with the support of more than 50 states. This constructive approach should help us identify through dialogue and consultations appropriate solutions for continuing the work of the High Commissioner and the Ethiopian Commission for Human Rights. Madam President, we call on all parties to cease these violations which have an adverse impact on the most vulnerable and which will we call on them to help Ethiopia regain peace. Thank you very much. Merci. I'd like to thank the distinguished ambassador of France 
We will now have a video statement from the distinguished representative of Austria. Thank you, Madam President. Austria aligns itself with the statement of the European Union. Austria is deeply concerned about the developments in Ethiopia expressed by the High Commission and welcomes today's special session. The findings of the joint OHCHR and Ethiopian Human Rights Commission in the cold of 3rd November, including ethnic violence, torture, and the ill treatment of civilians, sexual and gender based violence, and destruction of religious sites, are a shock. Human rights violations and abuses, as well as violations of international humanitarian law, must stop immediately. We are also alarmed by the humanitarian situation in Tigray and the neighboring regions of Afar and Amhara, with an estimated 9 million people in need of humanitarian assistance. Immediate action is needed to ensure access of humanitarian aid into all territories in need of assistance, to avert a large-scale famine and relieve the suffering of the local population in the region. Austria fully supports the African Union and regional mediation efforts. The Ethiopian government and the TPLF, as well as associated militias, must end the fighting now and move towards a ceasefire immediately and without preconditions. A political solution that respects Ethiopia's stability, unity, and territorial integrity is in indispensable. Inquiries on atrocities committed after June 2021 must continue. All alleged violations of international human rights and humanitarian law committed by any party to the conflict must be thoroughly investigated and the perpetrators held to account. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Austria. We'll now have a video statement from the distinguished representative of Cuba. Thank you, President. President, as regards the topic that brings us here today, in just a few months, the Council has adopted a resolution, held an interactive dialogue, and even a very recent oral update from the High Commissioner. None of these undertakings has in any way improved the situation on the ground. On the contrary, they contribute to exacerbating the politicization of this body. However, yet again, we have a special session that is being imposed against a developing country with another politically motivated resolution. Cuba would like to once more reject such exercises being carried out within the Council imposed on, human, on developing countries and which do not have the support of the country concerned. President, the Council and other human rights mechanisms need to move away from selective approaches and double standards when it comes to tackling human rights, and they should cease meddling in the internal affairs of states. Instead, cooperation, dialogue, and the respectful exchange of views between all countries should be promoted on the basis of the UN Charter's principles. That is the most effective way to protect and promote human rights. We must give priority to respect and support for national and regional efforts and to the initiatives of technical cooperation that do have the consent of the country concerned. Thank you. I thank the distinguished, the distinguished ambassador of Cuba. We'll now hear from the distinguished representative of Pakistan on Zoom. Thank you, Madam Vice President. We are closely following the various dimensions of the complex situation in Ethiopia. We hope all parties will exercise restraint, uphold rule of law, respect human rights, and resolve their differences through national dialogue and reconciliation process. The views expressed by Cameroon on behalf of the African group merit our serious reflection and introspection. Dialogue and constructive engagement should remain preferred vehicles to address human rights concerns emanating from any sovereign state. The consent of the concerned country is essential to bring any meaningful, meaningful improvement in the complex country-specific situation. The Council's track record in such cases is unenviable. The Russian establishment of HRC mandates have achieved little. In fact, they have derailed national and regional efforts and brought unintended consequences. In some cases, many HRC members advocating prevention continue to ignore systemic violations 
by powerful states based on political and commercial interests. Such an approach continues to breed impunity. Selectivity and application of political lens to human rights situation undermines universal values and principles. We have taken note of the joint investigative report's findings. We also note that Ethiopia has accepted the report's recommendation and has, and has taken several measures to implement them. At the same time, African Union-led mediation efforts are underway. We believe that the Council should give time for these regional and national processes and efforts to take their course. On balance, the country concerned has demonstrated willingness to cooperate and work with UN, regional and national human rights mechanisms. Furthermore, the Council is already seized of the situation in Northern Ethiopia. HRC Resolution 47-13 has mandated the High Commissioner to monitor and orally report on the situation and I quote, progress made in the context of joint investigation, unquote, at the upcoming March 2022 session. The value addition of convening the special session and its proposed outcome, therefore, remains a question mark for many states, including Pakistan. We respect their sovereign decisions and support, support the aspirations of the Ethiopian people to build a united, peaceful, and prosperous country. This session and its outcome should therefore contribute and complement towards this goal. I thank you. I'd like to thank the distinguished ambassador of Pakistan. We'll now hear from the distinguished representative of Eritrea on Zoom. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Let me on the answer put on record that the outrageous cost by the coordinator of the special procedure is unfair, baseless, and based on video source. It's neither in the culture of our discipline, defense forces, nor in our policy to clean Tigrayans from their own country. Madam Vice President, the convening of this special session is regrettably part of the ongoing abuse of the principles of human rights and the working method of the Council. In less than six months, the Council was called several times to discuss the human rights situation in the Tigray region of Ethiopia, including through briefings and then team briefings of the High Commissioner for Human Rights. Sadly, the deliberations aim at deflecting the attention of the Council from the real human rights violations that has happened in Ethiopia. The attempts all focus on one region while excluding the rest of Ethiopia in terms of coverage, and they aim at shifting the blame to others that fit the main culprits. In this vein, it's important to reiterate again that the Council does not remain ambivalent on the misguided action that has emboldened the TPLS to resort to military adventure through even using UN trucks that were allowed to deliver aid to the needy. The specialization is thus unfair unbalanced and undermines the UN Charter based responsibilities based on sovereign governments to restore law and order in times of crisis to defend their territorial integrity. Eritrea continues to reject the ongoing attempts to downplay the horrific attack on the Northern Command of Ethiopia Federal Forces and then discriminate rocket shelling on Eritrean cities. In conclusion, it's unacceptable to see some states continue to defend on a protracted disinformation campaign aiming at scapegoating Eritrea and covering up the essence of the crisis. I thank you, Madam Vice President. I thank the distinguished representative. And we'll now hear from the distinguished representative of the plurilateral state of Bolivia on Zoom. Gracias, Senora Vice Thank you, Madam Vice President. The plurinational state of Bolivia regrets that the advice of uh, Ethiopia and the African Union have been ignored when it comes to convening this meeting. Bolivia considers it to be of extreme importance to not overlook the fact that when we're dealing with country-specific issues, the work with the government concerned is of the essence in order to preserve its right to sovereignty and self-determination. We regret and view of concern the uh, lack of recognition for the national efforts made by Ethiopia and the uh, National Commission of Ethiopia, and we deplore attempts to minimize national capacities through the creation of a new mechanism. We, our work as council members, needs to avoid any attempt to politicize issues and double standards when it comes to human rights. Bolivia is in favor of constructive dialogues led by Ethiopia, and which take account of regional efforts and uh, with the necessary support from the human rights the Office of Human, uh, the High Commissioner for Human Rights. 
which is important to facilitate cooperation with the region as all decisions can be key for the country's stability. We therefore fully support the calls for dialogue and the efforts made by the African Union and the government of Ethiopia to move towards an inclusive political uh, solution which will respect the human rights of all. Thank you. Gracias. I'd like to thank the distinguished ambassador of Bolivia. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we shall now turn to the list of speakers for the observed states of the council. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Paraguay on Zoom. Thank you very much, Madam President. Paraguay condemns in the firmest terms the swift deterioration of the human rights situation in Ethiopia and the humanitarian situation, in particular in the areas of Afar, Amhara, Oromia and Tigray. We deplore the devastating impact that this is having on the civilian population. We are deeply concerned by the conclusions of the report of the joint investigation on human rights violations and violations of international humanitarian law and international refugee law committed by all parties to the conflict. In particular, we are worried by deliberate attacks against civilians and civilian goods or infrastructure, including violence against women, children, elderly people and people with disabilities, without forgetting, of course, the arbitrary detentions of UN staff. We support the efforts geared towards ending armed confrontation and promoting dialogue and cooperation to restore peace and stability. In particular, we commend the efforts made by the international community and the, medi the mediation efforts of the African Union to end this military and political crisis. We would like to remind all parties of the need to grant immediate and unhindered access to humanitarian help and supplies in accordance with what is established under international humanitarian law. Finally, we, uh, we call for an immediate end to extrajudicial killings and arbitrary detentions, and we call on all parties to protect civil society and respect their obligations under international human rights law and international humanitarian law. And we must um, continue with our next speaker. Um, so I give the floor now to the distinguished representative of Costa Rica by a video statement. Thank you very much. Costa Rica welcomes this special session as an opportunity for the HRC, in line with its prevention mandate, to identify the best steps to follow to prevent further atrocities in the Tigray region. The conclusions of the joint report by the High Commissioner and the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission, which show that all parties of the conflict have committed violations of international law which might constitute crimes against humanity and war crimes are extremely alarming. My country supports the call made by various states and international groups and civil society organizations to ask all those involved to respect their international obligations and scam the escalating violence, as well as complying with their responsibility to protect the civilian population and deal with the serious humanitarian crisis which has produced this conflict. Costa Rica calls on all to stop the shelling, attacks and murders which are indiscriminate against civilians, including those ethnic motivated and sexual violence and gender-based violence, violence against groups of women, girls and persons with disability, child soldiers, illegal executions and torture and other acts which threaten the population committed by various parties of the conflict. We must see an urgent halt to the violence and respect for international humanitarian law. With the support of the international community, all parties must come to dialogue to seek the best peaceful solutions, including to provide accountability for perpetrators and justice for victims. Thank you. Gracias. We'll now hear from the distinguished representative of Nigeria on Zoom. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Nigeria aligns with the statements delivered by the British representative of Cameroon on behalf of the African group and that of the government of Ethiopia to oppose the convening of a special session by this council on human rights situation in Ethiopia. We call for this special session of the southern disregard for the sovereignty and political independence of Ethiopia, and indeed an outright dismissal of the commitment and efforts of the government of Ethiopia in the implementation of the recommendations contained in the recent report of the joint investigation team. 
It is very pertinent to highlight that education by some member states to convene the special session without recourse to ongoing continental efforts and progress made to peacefully resolve the conflict in Ethiopia is very unhelpful. We are of the view that actions such as this only can undermine continental mediation efforts, including the engagement of the high representative of the chairman of the African Union Commission. The delegation of Nigeria remains resolute that, notwithstanding the nomenclature, any attempt to interfere in the internal politics of Ethiopia through the creation of a, another human rights mandate or mechanism is counterproductive and should neither be encouraged nor find room within this council. We therefore call on members of this esteemed council to support the government of Ethiopia in its efforts to achieve a peaceful resolution of the conflict by opposing any discussion or action that could escalate the already bad situation in the country. I thank you, Madam Vice President. Thank you. We'll now hear from the distinguished representative of New Zealand via video statement. Madam President, New Zealand is deeply concerned that the ongoing conflict in Ethiopia has created a dire humanitarian and human rights situation. We welcome this special session and call for the protection of all Ethiopians regardless of ethnicity. We commend the continued efforts undertaken by the African Union High Representative for the Horn of Africa region to support a political and non-military end to the conflict. New Zealand also commends OHCHR and the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission for their joint investigation and report that concluded all parties to the conflict have committed violations of international law. All parties must commit to implementing the findings and recommendations of the report. However, given the time-bound nature of a joint investigation, further work needs to be undertaken to investigate alleged human rights abuses after the 28th of June. The establishment of an international investigative mechanism to gather further evidence of violations and abuses of international law will be a critical step towards ensuring that victims have access to justice. Recent advances by the Tigray People's Liberation Front have spread the conflict to other parts of Ethiopia, exacerbating humanitarian need and impacting on the delivery of supplies and access to services. We call for immediate and unrestricted humanitarian access so that relief supplies re reach all those in need, particularly those most vulnerable. New Zealand stands with the international community in seeking a peaceful end to the conflict and calls for accountability and justice to ensure the human rights and fundamental freedoms of Ethiopians are protected. I thank the distinguished ambassador from New Zealand. We'll now hear from the distinguished representative of Timor-Leste on Zoom. Madam President, Timor-Leste welcomes the convenience of this special session to discuss the great human rights situation in Ethiopia. My country is deeply concerned with the report on widespread violations and abuses of human rights law, international humanitarian law, and international refugee law committed by all parties to the conflict. In particular, Timor-Leste condemns, in the strongest terms, the deliberate targeting of civilians, hospitals, schools, and places of worship, the widespread sexual and gender-based violence against women, girls, men, and boys, including rape, and calls for an immediate halt to all human rights violations. Alarmed by the strong risk of starvation in the country, my delegation stresses that all parties to the conflict must allow the people of Ethiopia to receive unrestricted aid, delivery, and to have full and safe access to humanitarian assistance without conditions. Timor Leste calls upon all parties to the conflict to ensure that food is not used as a weapon of war. We call for dialogue and for the respect of human rights in Ethiopia, with a special attention given to those internally displaced and in vulnerable situations. I wish to conclude by reiterating Timor Leste's support and solidarity with the people of Ethiopia. I thank you, Madam Vice President. I thank the distinguished ambassador. And now we'll hear from the distinguished representative of Australia on Zoom. Australia is greatly concerned by the ongoing reports of human rights violations and abuses in Ethiopia, including systemic sexual and gender-based violence committed by all parties to the conflict. We commend the recent joint report of the OHCHR and the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission. There needs to be immediate and effective action taken to address the widespread violations and abuses of international human rights law and violations of refugee and international humanitarian law detailed in the report. We welcome the early commitment by the government of Ethiopia 
to take steps toward accountability, including establishing an interministerial task force. We call on the other parties to the conflict to make similar commitments. We also call on this council to support accountability efforts by adopting the resolution establishing an investigative and reporting mechanism. The violations and abuses committed by all parties must cease. The longer they continue, the less chance there is of achieving lasting peace for the Ethiopian people. We call on all parties to the immediately end hostilities and stage in the ongoing mediation efforts led by the African Union High Representative for the Horn of Africa region. All parties must ensure urgent humanitarian support reaches those in need in Ethiopia and afford all necessary protections to humanitarian workers as they seek to alleviate the widespread suffering caused by this conflict. Thank you, Madam Vice President. I thank the distinguished ambassador from Australia. We'll now have a video statement from the distinguished representative of Sweden. Madam President, Sweden is deeply concerned by the violations and abuses of human rights and violations of international humanitarian law committed during the conflict, including the heinous and systematic use of sexual and gender-based violence. We are alarmed by the widespread hate speech and ethnic violence, which exacerbates ethnic divides and further complicates prospects for sustainable peace and reconciliation. Human rights must be respected. We call on all actors to refrain from hate speech, ethnic profiling and incitement to violence. Arbitrary arrests are unacceptable. We further call on all parties to respect international humanitarian law to agree a ceasefire and engage in genuine efforts for a political and sustainable solution. We fully support the African Union's efforts to engage the parties in talks. Madam President, all reports on violence and abuses must be investigated and their accountability ensured in an impartial and transparent manner. Impunity cannot be tolerated. We welcome the efforts of the Ethiopian government to this end, including the establishment of an interministerial task force. Considering the scope of the violations identified by the joint investigation team, further international independent investigations to gather evidence are necessary. We therefore urge this council to establish an independent international investigative mechanism and ask all parties to collaborate to ensure accountability. I thank you. I thank the distinguished ambassador from Sweden. We'll now have a video statement from the distinguished representative of Switzerland. President, Switzerland is gravely concerned by developments in northern Ethiopia. It condemns the violence as well as violations and threats of human rights and violations of international humanitarian law. It calls on all parties to the conflict to strictly respect their obligations under international law. As millions are facing food insecurity with a significant percentage threatened by famine, it is vital to guarantee rapid unimpeded access to humanitarian actors across the country. All violations of human rights and international humanitarian law must be investigated in order to bring alleged perpetrators to justice. Switzerland calls on all parties to the conflict to work to support the full protection of human rights and combat impunity. In this context, Switzerland thanks the Human High Commission of Human Rights and the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission for their impartial and tra transparent work in the context of the joint report who's, which was published at the beginning of November. It calls on all parties who haven't yet done so to accept the conclusions of the report. In this vein, Switzerland welcomes the recent efforts made by the Ethiopian government and encourages it to rapidly implement the measures laid out in order to make tangible progress. Switzerland also recommends to continue cooperation with the Human Rights Commissioner and the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission, which should work to extend violations of human rights and international humanitarian law committed after June 2021 into its mandate across all regions affected by the conflict. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Switzerland. We'll now have a video statement from the distinguished representative of Liechtenstein. Thank you, Madam President. We thank the Deputy High Commissioner for Human Rights for her update on the situation in Ethiopia. Liechtenstein is supportive of the call for the special session because we share the concerns over the dire and unfolding humanitarian and human rights situation in the country. The report of the Joint Investigation Team concluded that all parties to the conflict have committed serious violations and abuses of international human rights and humanitarian law, including indiscriminate attacks against civilians, extrajudicial killings, as well as sexual and gender-based violence. 
just to name a few. It is of utmost importance that the recommendations outlined in the report are implemented by all parties. In this regard, we welcome the steps taken by the government of Ethiopia to set up a task force to implement the recommendations, but also stress the importance of credible results. We further will welcome the mediation efforts by the African Union. We call on all parties to the conflict to respect their obligations under international law and to allow immediate, unhindered access for humanitarian aid in order to help the almost 10 million people in urgent need of this aid. Finally, we would like to express our support for the efforts to investigate serious violations and abuses of international law in Ethiopia and to hold perpetrators of these violations accountable. I thank you. I thank the distinguished ambassador. And now we'll have a video statement from the distinguished representative of Ireland. In alliance with the statement of the EU, we reiterate our full support for this special session and condemn the continued human rights violations and abuses by all parties. The humanitarian crisis caused by the armed conflict and exacerbated by restrictions on access for humanitarian aid has compounded the suffering of civilians. We echo calls for unimpeded access, an immediate and meaningful ceasefire without preconditions, and fully support the mediation efforts led by High Representative Obisanjo. The joint investigation was an important step towards accountability. We acknowledge commitments by the government of Ethiopia to implement its recommendations and the establishment of the interministerial task force. We support the work of the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission, but note their access to some areas continues to be restricted. Human rights violations and abuses continue to be committed by all parties, including recent arbitrary detentions. Continued reports of widespread sexual and gender-based violence and ethnic violence are particularly alarming. It is vital to ensure that response services are offered to any sexual violence survivors involved in investigations. Domestic accountability efforts to follow up on the joint investigation recommendations have so far not been sufficiently broad or transparent. Ireland supports the establishment of an international independent mechanism to complement domestic and regional accountability efforts as a vital step towards ensuring comprehensive human rights investigations, accountability for perpetrators, and justice for victims. I thank the distinguished ambassador of Ireland. We'll now hear from the distinguished representative of the Islamic Republic of Iran on Zoom. Thank you, Madam President. The protection and promotion of human rights within the Council and OSCHR should be guided by constructive dialogue and cooperation based on the principles of non politicization universality, objectivity, and non-selectivity. We take no determination shown and the step taken by the government of Ethiopia for being cooperative with the OSCHR as well as its positive attitude towards regional organization for mediation efforts with regard to the ongoing conflict in the country. We encourage the African solutions for the Ethiopia conflict and any efforts by the national community should be focused on bringing peace and stability to the Ethiopia while respecting sovereignty, political independence, and territorial integrity of the Ethiopia. Any undue politicization and politically motivated initiative jeopardize the credibility of the Human Rights Council and would defeat the purpose. The Islamic Republic of Iran encourages all parties to find an inclusive solution through dialogue and political reconciliation for lasting peace and prosperity for the people of the Ethiopia. I thank you, Madam President. I thank the distinguished representative of Iran. We'll now hear from the distinguished representative of Sri Lanka on Zoom. Madam President, Sri Lanka expresses solidarity with the friendly nation of Ethiopia as it seeks to address challenges that threaten to undermine the country's sovereignty and territorial integrity. We also welcome the progressive reforms undertaken by the government and measures taken by national authorities to address human rights concerns. Sri Lanka reiterates its principal position that actions that do not enjoy the support of the concerned country are counterproductive and contravene GA Resolution 60251 and the IB package. In this spirit, we believe that Resolution 4713, adopted at HRC 47, as well as any initiative to be adopted at this session, that does not enjoy the support of Ethiopia will only serve to undermine the spirit of cooperation required in promoting and protecting human rights. We recognize Ethiopia's right to safeguard its territorial integrity and to address issues through national processes 
and national institutions, including the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission, without external interference. This approach is consonant with Article 2.4 of the UN Charter. We encourage the international community to be constructive and cooperative in its approach and to support Ethiopia by supporting national processes aimed at advancing peace and the rights of all Ethiopians. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Sri Lanka. We'll now have a video statement from the distinguished representative of Albania. Madam President, Albania supported the convening of this special session. The joint report by the Office of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights and the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission documented a litany of gross human rights violations and abuses and serious violations of international humanitarian and refugee law, some of which may amount to war crimes and crimes against humanity. We are deeply concerned by the High Commissioner's warning that the exceedingly worrying and volatile situation in Ethiopia is spiraling out of control with civilians, as ever, caught in the middle. Albania strongly supports the resolution before the Council and the establishment of an international commission of human rights experts on Ethiopia. The horrific violations and abuses identified by the joint investigative team require immediate investigation and documentation in order to ensure accountability and to prevent impunity of perpetrators on all sides. Madam President, promoting the Women, Peace and Security Agenda is Albania's top priority during its upcoming term in the UN Security Council. We wish to thank the co-sponsors of the resolution for explicitly including the integration of the gender perspective and the survivor-centered approach in the mandate of the International Commission of Human Rights Experts on Ethiopia. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Albania We'll now have a video statement from the distinguished representative of the United States of America. The United States is deeply concerned about the escalating crisis in Ethiopia and widespread human rights abuses committed by all parties to the conflict. We condemn the use of starvation as a weapon of war, which the Ethiopian government has reportedly done by blocking humanitarian access and detaining tens of thousands of ethnic Tigrayans under life-threatening conditions. We also condemn the Tigray People's Liberation Front's human rights abuses, including killing and raping civilians. We are profoundly worried by reports that Amhara forces are systematically killing Tigrayans in Western Tigray. Finally, we condemn Eritrean forces' human rights abuses in Ethiopia. The United States urges the creation of a mechanism to investigate, report on, and collect and preserve evidence of all violations and abuses by the parties to the conflict. And we call for, one, the parties to end hostilities, enable unhindered humanitarian access, enter negotiations without preconditions, refrain from inflammatory rhetoric, and respect human rights. Two, the Ethiopian government to release all civilians and allow international monitors timely access to detainees. And three, those responsible for violations and abuses to be held accountable. I thank the distinguished representative of the United States of America. We'll now have a video statement from the distinguished representative of Croatia. Thank you, Madam President. Croatia aligns itself with your statement. We thank the Deputy High Commissioner for her presentation and for the report done by the OHCHR and the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission following a joint investigation. Findings of the report paint a very serious picture of a country in crisis, reporting allegations of grave human rights violations and abuses committed by all parties to the conflict. Following the High Commissioner's briefing, the escalation of hostilities and faced with the dear human suffering on the ground, the Council has now an opportunity to exercise its preventive mandate and to ensure a response by the international community. Croatia believes in a peaceful solution to the conflict and supports all mediation efforts. We appreciate especially the role of the African Union in the region. We call upon all parties to agree to a ceasefire in order to create conditions for negotiations. Madam President, 
the seriousness of the reported allegations of widespread violations of international law, some of which may amount to war crimes and crimes against humanity, calls for an independent investigative mechanism that can establish the facts and circumstances, collect evidence and provide accountability for victims. We stress the importance of compiling comprehensive, verifiable and transparent records of all casualties of the conflict, which in turn supports the accountability and the realization of human rights. We call upon all parties to the armed conflict to take all feasible measures to account for persons reported missing as a result of hostilities. I thank you. I'd like to thank the distinguished ambassador from Croatia. We'll now hear from the distinguished representative of South Africa on Zoom. Madam Vice President, South Africa expresses its deep concern about the ongoing situation in, in Ethiopia. Well, Not South Africa. I'm sorry, um, could you please um, continue, Ambassador? Madam Vice President, South Africa expresses its deep concern about the ongoing situation in Ethiopia, notably the escalating conflict, the serious allegations of human rights violations, and the worsening humanitarian crisis. We call on all parties to cease hostilities and conduct themselves in accordance with their solemn obligation under international human rights law and humanitarian law. We reiterate our support for the mediation efforts undertaken by President Obasanjo, the AU envoy, and, and urge all parties to cooperate towards finding a durable, peaceful solution to the conflict. South Africa believes that there is ample scope for dialogue among all parties and calls on them to work towards creating conditions, including the necessary cessation of hostilities that will pave the way towards an inclusive political dialogue. It is a political solution, not a military one, that will bring about lasting peace, stability, and development for all people of Ethiopia. We welcome the decision of the Ethiopian government to accept and implement the recommendations contained in the reports of the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission and the Office of the High Commissioner, which were published last month. We urge other parties to also accept and implement these recommendations. We call on all parties to provide unhindered humanitarian access to affected areas, particularly the Tigray region. We reaffirm our solidarity with the people of Ethiopia during this difficult time and confirm our readiness to provide support as may be required. I thank you, Madam Vice President. Thank you, Ambassador. We will now hear from the distinguished representative of the Holy See, who will be addressing the council in person. So you have the floor. Madam Vice President, the Holy See has been following with great attention and deep concern the developments of the grave situation of conflict and violence that have been occurring in Ethiopia. In this most difficult time, the Holy See wishes to assure once again its spiritual closeness, prayer, and solidarity with the people of Ethiopia, especially the displaced and the refugees. The Holy See is particularly concerned with the grave humanitarian implications of the continuing conflict and urges all stakeholders, each in their own specific capacity, to ensure access by the civilian population to basic and essential services wherever they are needed. The Holy See, in hoping for a peaceful and swift resolution to the ongoing tensions, remains confident that dialogue in a spirit of fraternity may bring about the much desired peace. Indeed, in the words of Pope Francis, the way of peace reconciles conflicts and regenerates the beauty of fraternity. There is no other way to achieve reconciliation. Let us nurture hope by openness to sincere discussion that would give priority to people's needs. Thank you, Madam Vice President. I'd like to thank the distinguished representative from the Holy See. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> we shall now turn to the list of speakers for non-governmental organizations. The first, person, the first organization on my list is the representative of East and Horn of Africa Human Rights Defenders Project. Madam President, Madam High Commissioner, the joint OHCHR slash EHRC report found evidence that all parties to the Tigray conflict have committed violations of international law, some of which may amount to war crimes and crimes against humanity. It concluded that those responsible should be held to account and that an international independent mechanism could be established to collect evidence of the atrocities in preparation for persecution. The joint report was positively stated, as was the Council's decision to ensure reporting and public debate 
of the Tigray crisis. This special session is an opportunity to take another step as the conflict has spread to other regions and as, as attacks against the human rights defenders, civil society, and independent journalists, and, uh, and as restrictions to freedom of expression multiply, we urge the Council to establish an independent mechanism with mandate to investigate, report on, and collect and preserve evidence of violations and abuses. The mechanism should shed light on violations committed by all parties. It should report regularly to the Council and formulate recommendations to prevent and further violations and ensure accountability. It should be complement complementary to the African Union efforts to address the crisis and prevent the worst in Ethiopia. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now hear from Human Rights Watch. Thank you very much, Madam President. As the world endlessly debates how to respond to the devastating conflict in Ethiopia, the conflict has spread and with it serious abuses by all parties to the conflict. Yesterday, we reported on the latest wave of abuses in Western Tigray. Since November, Amhara forces have forcibly expelled thousands of Tigrayans, older people, children, and women. Those seen to be of fighting age have been locked up in horrific conditions. Men trying to escape arrest were killed, and these are war crimes. Last week, we documented how Tigrayan forces extrajudicially executed dozens of civilians in just two small towns in the Amhara region in September. Those were war crimes. A human tragedy is unfolding before our eyes in Tigray, in the Amhara region, in Afar, in Oromia. The establishment of an international mechanism on Ethiopia could not be more timely. To undertake further investigations, gather and preserve evidence, lay the foundation for accountability, and importantly, spell out recommendations on transitional justice. The victims and survivors of the atrocities we have reported on, and those that have not yet been documented, deserve this opportunity for accountability and respect for their basic rights. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now hear from El Zika Relief Foundation. Madam President, this one year conflict is escalating now and the fighting is moving toward the capital. There is no intention now for any of the parties of the conflict to change their position or to cease fire at this moment. On the contrary, both sides are claiming victories. Civilians all over Ethiopia are the ones who bear the consequences of this armed conflict. Ethiopia is facing humanitarian crisis all across the country. This year's conflict led to the death of thousands of Ethiopians, pushed parts of the country to famine and forced more than nearly 2 million people to leave their houses. Adding to that, all conflict parties, including the government, committed war crimes, and the most affected in this armed conflict are women and girls. Sexual and gender-based violence and gang rape are the systematic and repetitive. The government has promised to hold accountable any of the parties, any of the forces who violated human rights, especially those who committed acts of rape. The question is, how will the government hold the allies from Eritrea who committed violations also accountable. Are they free now from these violations and raped? Eliska Relief Foundation recommends to urge all parties to stop the conflict and cease fire, to urge the government not to block the delivery of humanitarian aid, to continue transparent investigations by the council and held accountable those who committed war crimes and human rights violations from all parties. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now hear from Amnesty International. Over the past year, Amnesty International has documented a litany of violations and abuses in Ethiopia, including sexual and gender-based violence, extrajudicial killings, indiscriminate shelling and widespread looting, violations of international law, some of which amount to war crimes and possibly crimes against humanity. We're alarmed by the ongoing wave of ethnically motivated arbitrary mass arrests and the surge of killings and forced expulsions of Tigrayans by Amara security forces in Western Tigray. Tigrayan civilians attempting to escape this new wave of violence have been attacked and killed. Scores in detention currently face torture, starvation, and denial of medical care. The scale and brutality of the use of sexual and gender-based violence as a weapon of war is particularly disturbing. We've documented how Ethiopian government-aligned forces have subjected Jabrian women and girls to rape, gang rape, sexual slavery, sexual mutilation, and other forms of torture, often using ethnic slurs and death threats, in a context and scale amounting to war crimes and possibly crimes against humanity. They raped me one after the other, one woman told us. I don't know if they realized I was pregnant. I don't know if they realized I was a person. 
But it's not just one side responsible for crime. Since July, we've documented serious abuses, including sexual violence by Tigrayan forces. In some cases, TPLF forces told women they were raping them in revenge for the rape of Tigrayan women by federal government forces. Accountability for these crimes is critical to ensure justice for survivors and a deterrent against further abuses. We urge all states to support today's important resolution in the creation of a robust investigative mechanism. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now hear from Partners for Transparency. Thank you very much, Madam President. Partners for Transparency. We call for the imposition of uh, restrictions on the on humanitarian financing of the Ethiopian government and bring pressure to bear on the Ethiopian government to uh, put an end to the uh, gross violations of human, of human rights against Tigray people. We also affirm that more economic sanctions must be imposed to deter the, the uh, Ethiopian go government from its repressive practices. Thank you. Thank you um, for those listening in. If you did not um, have translation, unfortunately, um, the interpreters were unable to translate given the speed at which the video was um, delivered. We'll now hear from Matt for Peace, Development and Human Rights Association. Matt for Peace, welcome this special session. Having monitored the human rights situation in Ethiopia during the war, Matt confirms that the situation portends a humanitarian crisis. Over one year of the Ethiopian Federal Army's war on the Tigray region, more than 55,000 people were killed, 5.2 million suffered from food insecurity. In light of the federal government's refusal to allow the entry of necessary humanitarian aid, in violation of Article 70 of Additional Protocol 1 to the four Geneva Conventions and relevant UN General Assembly resolutions that emphasize the need for humanitarian aid to reach civilians in extreme emergency situations. Serious violations committed by the Ethiopian federal government included the arrest of more than 23 aid workers. Ma'ad therefore calls on the federal government in Ethiopia to allow humanitarian aid to reach civilians affected by the internal fightings and to ensure full protection for aid workers, humanitarian organizations, and UN staff in Ethiopia. Ma'ad also called on all parties of the war in Ethiopia to stop all hostilities and enter into unconditional negotiation to avoid by further loss of life. Thank you, Madam. Thank you. We'll now hear from World Evangelical Alliance. I'm Bishop Thomas Schirmacher, Secretary General of the World Evangelical Alliance, representing Protestant churches with over 600 million members around the world. The World Evangelical Alliance is deeply concerned about the conflict in Ethiopia. We recognize there are grievances on both sides. However, the way to resolve conflict is not through taking up arms. We call upon all parties to the conflict for an immediate ceasefire. We plead with all sides to engage in a negotiating process to bring lasting peace in this. We stand ready to support a peace and reconciliation process, particularly engaging our regional branch, the Association of Evangelicals in Africa, and our Peace and Reconciliation Network. 
We welcome the current mediation efforts involving the African Union, the African Commission on Human Rights and People Rights, and the Intergovernmental Authority for Development. Furthermore, we appeal to all parties to ensure immediate and unimpeded delivery of humanitarian and aid supplies to the civilians and eternally displaced persons, including across the conflict lines. Thank you. We'll now hear from Rado. The Rado welcomes the holding of this special session on the human rights situation in Ethiopia, as well as congratulates the countries that have taken the initiative to convene the session, even though immense damage has already been caused. For the past year, we have been witnessing the continuation of unbearable violence between Ethiopian government armed forces and Tigrayan rebels. And yet one of the main objectives of the creation of the Human Rights Council is to prevent such a situation. Therefore, Rado regrets that the Council has not reacted in time to put an end to this conflict. Rado condemns in the strongest possible terms, rape, killings, extrajudicial and summary executions and destruction of property perpetrated by both parties to the conflict. Rado calls in the two parties involved who are both Ethiopian to prioritize the interest of the country and observe a ceasefire and return to the negotiation table. Furthermore, Rada supports the establishment of an international commission of inquiry to ensure that the principal culprits of violations of international humanitarian law and human rights law are brought to account before the competent courts. In conclusion, Rada supports the mediation efforts of President Obasanjo and reaffirms its commitment to the unity, integrity, and the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ethiopia. Thank you. We'll now hear from the International Bar Association. The IBS Human Rights Institute welcomed this special session on the, on the grave human rights situation in Ethiopia. The situation in Ethiopia requires urgent response that goes beyond merely condemning the crimes. We welcome the proposal to establish a mechanism to conduct investigations, establish facts, collect and present evidence, and where possible identify those most responsible. This is a crucial step to ensure justice and accountability. We further welcome the proposal to include guidance on transitional justice. We appreciate the reference to integrating a gender perspective. However, we consider this is not enough and language of sexual and gender-based violence is crucial. The issues surrounding HGBV are omnipresent in Ethiopia. A breakdown of traditional accountability mechanisms, increased exposure to and normalization of HGBV, lack of economic opportunities, and the prioritization of HGBV, lack of HGBV reporting mechanism, and adequately trained healthcare workers are highlighted as contributing factors to widespread HGBV. As such, the response to HGBV must be comprehensive and must be fully incorporated by the new mechanism. The use of sexual violence as a weapon of war in Ethiopia is a fact reported by the UN on several occasions and not a claim yet to be proven. The new mechanism may only elaborate on the true scale of the issue. The omission of the issue from the resolution is a significant failure that must be addressed. I thank you. Thank you. We'll now hear from Christian Solidarity Worldwide. Madam President. CSW welcomes the convening of this special session. The humanitarian and human rights situation remains critical. CSW notes the disturbing findings of the OHDHR EHRC joint investigation, despite its limitations, and that since the end of its reporting period in June, the situation has worsened. We remain deeply concerned by continuing reports of starvation being used as a weapon of war and of mass incarceration of Tigrayan civilians, including infants, on the basis of ethnicity. We are also concerned by reports of arms sales to Ethiopia, which effectively prolong a war that increasingly seems unwinnable. The immediate priorities, therefore, are a ceasefire, unhindered humanitarian relief and the release of those unjustly detained. But Madam President, to recover from this conflict, Ethiopia will also require accountability and justice. CSW urges the Council to establish and support the immediate operationalization of a genuinely independent mechanism to thoroughly investigate alleged violations of international human rights, humanitarian and refugee law committed since the 3rd of November 2020, to collect evidence on the most serious violations committed during the conflict, 
and to prepare files for criminal prosecution by a national, regional or international tribunal. We further call on the international community to initiate an arms embargo and to impose targeted sanctions on military and political persons and entities identified as complicit in human rights abuses, particularly on the leaders of Ethiopia and Eritrea, who bear ultimate responsibility for the appalling violations that are being committed with impunity by their respective forces. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now hear from International Human Rights Council. Thank you, Chair, for the floor. We stand behind the joint report of the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission and the United Nations Human Rights Office and the 16 countries who have issued a statement to seriously hold accountable those responsible for committing human rights violations in Ethiopia and investigate them. IHRC considers it's necessary to maintain its permanent concern regarding the implementation of international decisions and demands by the Ethiopian authorities regarding the implementation of sensible measures to overcome the continuing restrictions on the access of humanitarian organizations to many areas in Ethiopia that suffer from a lack of food, clean water, and the minimum necessities of life. In addition to the hard work what and what the issues require and to put an end to the impunity for those who violate this provision. Accordingly, the IHRC also holds that all opposing parties to an internal conflict must immediately cease hostilities and impose a mechanism to compel the parties concerned to embrace the idea of negotiations without preconditions on a permanent ceasefire and commit to achieving a lasting peace, confirming the violations and abuse committed by forces in the northern Tigray region through a UN investigation committee and holding them accountable later in accordance with the international judicial norms. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now hear from Sivakus. Thank you, Madam President. We welcome the convening of this long overdue special session on Ethiopia. The High Commissioner's update to the Council in November highlighted the need for transparent investigations and accountability for what's been unfolding in the country over the past year. The conflict and the human suffering have both escalated since then. Restrictions imposed have left humanitarian groups unable to carry out their work amidst increased humanitarian needs, food insecurity, and disruption of livelihoods. As a result of this loss in services, millions could be denied the aid they need to stay alive. Fragile gains made by civil society over the past few years are at great risk. It's become dangerous for national civil society to engage in public advocacy, with pressure imposed and threats perpetrated by both state and non-state actors, compounded by a sweeping state of emergency. The online space for dissent is radically shrinking. Numerous journalists have been detained, with at least nine still in custody at the beginning of this month. The conflict itself has spread to neighboring regions and threatens millions of civilians. There's a clear absence of any transparent and credible national accountability process for violations and abuses committed. Following calls from the High Commissioner of Civil Society, the Council must act on its prevention mandate, which was established to avert atrocity and crimes against humanity. It can do so by adopting a resolution that establishes an independent investigative mechanism, mandated to investigate, report on, and to collect and preserve evidence of alleged violations and abuses of international human rights law and violations of international humanitarian law by all parties to the conflict. We thank you. Thank you. We'll now hear from International Organization for the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination. Thank you. As for humanitarian aid, the Tigray's population continues to be blocked by Ethiopian authorities. We welcome the convening of this special session. As a result of the ongoing conflict, Ethiopia is currently facing large-scale internal displacements, which according to the International Organization for Migration could amount to 1.8 million people. The number of enforced disappearances and government arrests have increased, and insecurity persists in the regions of Oromia and Beni Shangul Gamuz. There, government forces carry out operations against armed militia, resulting in serious abuses and attacks against minorities. The government is also responsible for harassing and arbitrarily arresting members of the political opposition and journalists. Victims are also subject to abuses such as executions, widespread sexual violence, and torture. The government has notably limited the right to freedom of expression and access to internet and social media. EFORD and Geneva International Center for Justice 
recommend that the special session call on all parties to Ethiopia's conflict, Tigrayan Defense Forces included, to respect international human rights law by immediately seizing unlawful attacks on civilians and holding responsible those who commit human rights abuses in the region. Thank you. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, that was the last statement. We have exhausted the list of speakers. I wish to thank you for your statements and for your contributions to this discussion. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of this morning's meeting. We shall reconvene at 3 p.m. to consider the draft resolution A slash HRC slash S dash 33 dash, I'm sorry, I'll repeat it again. A slash HRC slash S dash 33 slash L dot one. I request all 47 states, members of the council, and the representative introducing the draft resolution on behalf of the main sponsors and the representative of the country concerned to join this Zoom meeting at 2.30 p.m. this afternoon to allow the secretariat to verify that they are present on Zoom and duly represented and in a position to take part in the voting process. All other observers are kindly invited to exit this Zoom meeting. I hereby declare closed the first meeting of the 33rd Special Session of the Human Rights Council. So we shall resume at 2.30. Please. My apologies, I'm advised that we will resume the meeting at 3 p.m. this afternoon. Thank you very much. I hereby declare close the first meeting of the 33rd Special Session of the Human Rights Council. <laughs>